Hi, I'm Mark from Fluke. Let's talk about cable testing with the Link IQ tester. Let's cover a few settings that need to be made before you start your cable testing. You touch up here to set up your cable testing settings. The first one is the shield test. If you're testing shielded cable, you may wish to test the integrity of the shielding of the cabling. You can also turn on allow crossover, which means the cable tester will not fail a cable that is a crossover cable. It will pass those as well as straight through cables. Finally, the pinout, T568A or T568B. Depending on which standard you use, you can pick that. That shows you which colors are used in the wire map display so that they'll match the actual cable you're using. Next are the cable settings, the test limit. Now the test limit can be set anywhere between, well, no test limit, all the way up to 10 gig. And what that does is that determines what the pass-fail limit of the tester is. The tester can test a cable to 10 gig, but maybe sometimes you only need a cable that goes to one gig. So I might set the limit for a one gig cable. Next is the NVP, or nominal velocity of propagation. What that does is determine how the cable tester makes its length measurements based on the amount of time it takes for a pulse to travel down the length of the cable. You can usually get that spec from the manufacturer of the cable. And the last one is the PoE test. Now that's really part of the network tests, but what this does is disables the PoE test so that the tester won't take the extra time necessary to make all of the PoE measurements and you can get your job done a little bit faster. But if you do want to test PoE, make sure you turn it on. Now let's move on to cable testing with the Link IQ. Now you can test a cable even without the remote identifier attached. And let me show you what that looks like. We're going to hit auto test and the results will come up. Now notice I don't have a remote ID attached, but I can see the length of the cable. And I can also see that two of the pairs are open. The three, six and seven, eight pairs are open. If I touch the pairs, you'll see that the overall cable is 22 meters long. However, the three, six and seven, eight pairs are only 1.4 meters, which indicates there's an opening somewhere in the line between here and the end of the cable at 22 meters. Now let's see what happens when we connect this remote ID to the cable and then run the auto test. And we'll automatically test the cable. Now we'll see here, since I attached the identifier, we see the remote ID number five. We still failed. Now the tester gives me a little bit more information. I can see that pin six and pin seven is open. So three and eight are not open as it was indicated before. We still failed, it still failed the wire map. We can go to pairs and see the failure is at 1.4 meters and the overall cable is about 22 meters long. It's probably a connector that's at the end of the patch cord, I'm going to guess. So now I know what to go and fix. You notice that it does not show any information on the speedometer because frankly, this cable won't work for any technology. All right, so now we've made some changes to our cable. Let's run another auto test and see what we come up with. Now this time you see we are connected to remote ID number five. The cable's 17.5 meters long and this one's failed. Notice the wire map is okay. The wires all go straight through. And if I look down here at the bottom of the screen, I can see I failed because I got a split pair. And in fact, it involves the three, six, four, five pair. If you need to get more information about it, you'd need to use a product like our DSX Cable Analyzer, which could actually tell you where the split pair is. But in this case, I know there's a split pair and I've got to go out and fix that cable. So those last few cables weren't very good. Let's see if we got a better one this time. Now this cable's 15.5 meters long, it has remote ID number five. It's wired up properly. And now we get to see the speedometer at the bottom of the screen. The speedometer is indicating that we have passed our one gig limit that we set on the tester. But in fact, this is telling me that this cable is capable all the way to 10 gigabits. So that's great news. So let's save this result. I'll hit the save as button. The test ID has automatically incremented. I'll hit okay. And the results saved in the tester.